Hello and welcome back to the course on our programming. I hope you had a chance to practice what we talked about last time and specifically basic operations in a data frame. And today we're talking about filtering data frames. All right, let's get started. I'm going to copy this and create a new section in our code. And this one we will call filtering data frames. All right. In the previous section, we mostly talked about working with columns, right? Except for at the very start where we talked about the square brackets, but then we were mostly working with columns, column multiplied by column, create column, then recycling of vectors for columns or into columns, and then also deleting columns. But filtering is actually more about rows, right? So like if you think about it in Excel terms, right, you've got a table and you want to look at only specific rows then you switch the filters on the columns are still in place but some rows are hidden some rows uh, become visible or you want to you know just, uh, switch off uh, like delete some rows so that's also a filtering and so on so working with rows how do we do it in r well the first thing that i'm going to show you is a pretty cool feature or a cool approach is let's say i want to look at stats uh, so let's start with head stats. This is getting a very used, becoming a very used function, head stats, because we're using it in every tutorial. I'm sure you'll remember it after uh, this section. So head stats, and let's say we want to look at internet users. Let's say we want to look at internet users, and so we'll say stats dollar sign internet users, right? So that's that column. Now let's say we want to find out which internet users or which countries have less than two internet users, less than 2% of people using internet. We would say stats internet users, remember this is a vector, and then we're comparing it with the number two. And what that will give us is it'll compare every single value in this vector with the number two. So let's run that. You will see that we've got this vector of false, 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 and then there's a true here. False, 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 and so on and so on. There's another true, there's another true. So every time it comes across a value that's less than two, it'll put a true. Otherwise, it will be false. Okay, so in return, we've got a vector. And what can we do with this vector now? Well, we can put this vector into an object. And let's call that object filter. If we run this, now we've got an object filter, which looks exactly like that. What can we do with this filter? Well, what we can do is we can go to stats, and then in square brackets, and this is the cool feature I was talking about. In stats, you can say in the rows, you know how we used to say 1 to 10, right? Or one to a hundred, right? We want to see the first hundred rows. Well, now what we're going to do is instead of saying one to hundred, we're going to say filter. And that will pass, and this is the important part that we have to understand, that stats will take a vector, which is exactly the same length as the data frame, but this vector is a true false vector. So every time it will come across a true, it will display that row. Every time it comes across a false, it won't display that row. So if we run that, you'll see that we've got only selected rows and they all do indeed have less than two internet users. So these countries, they don't have, the internet is not that widespread and therefore only a couple of like one, around one percentage of the population actually uses the internet there or has access to the internet. And how did we get that? Once again, we have a vector with true false values and this data frame, the way we're calling it, or the way we're accessing it, every time it comes across a true value, it will display that row. Every time it across, comes across a false value, it won't display, display that row. Okay, that's filtering. So that's a very a neat feature to remember and use. And now we're going to actually not just use it, we're going to abuse it. So let's start doing that. Stats, and now what we're going to do is Let's say we want to look at P countries with birth rate over 40. Remember, we looked in the SCR from, from the SCR function. We know that it's never over 50. But let's look at the countries with over 40. How would we do that? Well, we would use a similar approach. But this time, we're not even going to create the filter. We're going to just take this, right? And we're going to put a comma. And we're going to, instead of doing this intermediary step, we'll just put it right in here. And now we'll just change the condition greater than 40 and not internet users, we want a different column. What's the column that we want? Birth rate, birth rate, there we go. So if I run this now, I will get all of the countries that have a birth rate over 40. That means per thousand people, 40 people, at least 40 people are born every year. Well, basically 
that those countries, their population is growing very quickly. There we go. That was that easy. And that is thanks to the new approach that we learned that not always you have to just pass the numbers that you want to display the, no the row numbers, but you can actually uh, supply a true false vector and it will tell you the data frame will return the rows that are associated with the true values in your vector. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this condition even more interesting. We're going to say where countries with birth, birth rate over 40, but now out of these, we want to select only the countries with internet users under two. So we will add the and, and remember it's a single and, unlike some other programming languages, stats, dollar sign, and then internet users less than two, right? So now these both of these conditions have to be true for the row to show up. If we run that, now we've got just three rows, one to three countries, all of them have a birth rate over 40 and internet users under two. Awesome. What else can we do? Well, let's filter by categorical variable. One of these, let's look at income group. Oh, well, actually, we only have one proper categorical variable. These are just the country names and so on. So let's filter by income group. And now we will say stats dollar sign income group equals. So double equals. Let's remember that. And uh, let's say we want to look at all the high income countries. And don't forget the comma, comma nothing. All right, let's run that. Okay, you see, I made a mistake. I made a mistake in my code. That's why I got an empty result. So high income, no incomes. <laughs> if we run that, there we go. So we can see all the countries with high income. You can see on the right, they're all they're all high income. Okay, that's good. And so we know about factors. We've already talked about factors. If you want to check a different one, then you can always use levels, right? And stats income group to find out what the factors are. If you want to try out a different one and then you can try lower middle income just out of curiosity and uh, or just to experiment. And the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to give you an exercise. So it's kind of like a brain teaser and, and we'll solve it right away here as well. So try finding, can you find out uh, all of the information from this data frame about Malta? So Malta is a country, try find this information. So use what you've learned here. It's going to be a bit different. You might, you need to make a little change. And uh, can you find please the information from Malta? So pause this video and give it a go. And in three, two, one, we're going to solve it together. All right, so the way to solve it is stats. And then here you want to filter by country name, right? Country name equals Malta, comma nothing. If I run that, I get that one row where country name equals Malta. So they have a birth rate of 9.5, internet users 68.9, then they're in the high income group. There we go, that's how you filter data frames. I hope this information was useful and hopefully not too complicated. There is actually nothing complicated about it. It's just we introduced a new concept where you can pass a vector of true false values into your data frame to find the correct values. I know like here it looks a bit complicated, You've, you're calling a data frame and then you're calling it again. But when you think of it in this ter in these terms, that first you're creating the vector and then you're passing it into the data frame, it's all pretty simple, but this is a very powerful approach and uh, you will be using it a lot in R. So it was good that we covered it off. And uh, now we're going to move on to the next tutorial. I look forward to seeing you there. And until next time, happy coding.